This is my slight welfare slash educational reform idea. I propose that school attendance and performance be tied to welfare slash government assistance. My educator friends do not like that. Because mm -hmm. they're like, what about special needs? What about, I'm like, yo, caveats can be made. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not saying that they have to be on honor roll. I'm just saying pass. Mm -hmm. and they're like, why are you saying this? Okay, well. Like I said, this individual cares about the students. Like it's literally her job there, right? And so she's going on about what's messed up and, you know, the higher up people just want to get doctorates and feel important, but really aren't connected to the community. And these kids, these kids, these kids are the ones that are lost and missing out and not getting anything. Mm -hmm. And so she's going on and, and, and she was, and she got to some part about testing and she was like, you know, and these tests are, are racially biased. And that was when the record kind of like just skipped in my head, you know, like the damn needle just dragged across the joints. Cause first of all, I was like, this wasn't even a person of color that hit me with the, these tests are, are, are racially biased. And I was like, what do you, and I had, that was when I had to stop. I was like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm like the square root of a nine is three, regardless of what you look like. The, yeah. You know what I'm saying? A squared plus B squared equals C squared is the Pythagorean theorem, no matter what you look like or your gender. I'm like, what do you mean these tests are racially biased? And she said, are you familiar with light cell? I was, I'm like, no. And she's like, light cell is like this, it's what they grade the reading comprehension and stuff on, you know, with, with students or whatever. And so basically what she was telling me was that the reason the tests are racially biased is because the school systems themselves have to make a curriculum a curriculum that properly teaches to that test and what happens is lacking school districts right don't have the proper curriculums to teach to that test to test well on it so that's why they are quote unquote racially biased yeah and i had to thank them for being educated on that because i was going straight <laughs> to facts is facts is facts regardless yeah. of what you look like i don't know what the hell you're talking about um Not giving the right tools yeah yeah so i got that and so this is what i want to get your opinion on i'm going to get your opinion on two things i'm gonna, we're going to wrap it up and not going to go too long but i want to get your opinion on this really quickly because i have the opinion that to be honest no matter how big of a heavy lift you try to do with um, educational systems, I really don't think that programs can really aid students as much as parents can. And what I mean by that is private schools don't have the same issues with reading and writing that public schools do. Right. And it's like, why? Most of it is because of parental involvement. Mm-hmm. Most of it is because you don't just pay money to send your kid to this school. You also have to act. You right. also have some of these schools have a minimum requirement is of things you have to volunteer for. Showing up to meetings isn't optional. Right. So let's take Atlanta public schools, for instance, about Jason could speak on this better than I can because he worked, you know, he worked in a uh, APC. Um, but I remember when they had that whole, uh, ooh, let me see what Shara had in here. I remember when we had that whole um, APC dis, uh, accrediting thing uh, down here. We, I don't know if you knew about it, but Atlanta Public Schools for a minute was about to lose their accreditation or something with testing, some cheating scandal, some junk like that going on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was a big deal down here. And I think it was big with educators. Educators knew about it. Well, one thing I remembered about that was news people showing up to a school and being like you know asking some parents what did they think about the situation going on Stu you know teachers pretty much having to cheat because their jobs depended on these students that couldn't um yeah. pass tests or whatever whatnot and so you know they were doing interviews with with parents and you would see it time and time again of these parents that was just like this is a disgrace this messed up and blah 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 and you could tell that like a lot of these people this is the first time you've even been at this damn school <laughs> 
Why are you up here shaking your head and rolling your neck and you ain't even damn been here, bro? Yeah. And so that's what I, and that, that's what my question is. Do you really think that programs for public schools really help affect the achievement of our students more than families and parents actually giving a damn about what happens with said students because going back to what you were saying with the asian americans with the indian americans it's not a kawinky dink mm -hmm. and it's not a kawinky dink that private school students perform better right and so uh, yeah, I want to get your opinion on that. And I and I got one more thing I'm going to ask you about um, education. I want to see what your opinion is on it, because educators that I know don't like that don't like this particular idea. So I want to know what your what your opinion is. Well, I definitely agree that having an active parent that's on your ass all the time, <laughs> that's checking your homework, you mm -hmm. know, my um my ex, my ex, uh, my ex wife was um an Asian American, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, I know, you know, firsthand how how you you can kind of see the difference, and not to say that there aren't you know some active black parents in in, their, in your life, in mm -hmm. your lives or whatever, mm -hmm. but there is a difference when they're checking your homework, making sure you're doing it because mm -hmm. you're active parent and you still like you can't comprehend some shit, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. still not able to do the assignment. I just find that highly unlikely a lot of times. Mm -hmm. and that's on you. Is that's definitely going to happen. Um, now the question I had before I, uh, you know, try to make an intelligent, give a intelligent answer on this is when you say programs, what, what do you mean when you talk about these programs? Well, like, so like you see, like students are testing low, right. Mm -hmm. And democratically speaking, usually they'll want to make a, a program or initiative, pump a bunch of money into, into this uh, district. And let's say, let's do this, this, and that. And then and then see what happens with the test, you know, test scores three, four, five years from now. That's mm -hmm. what I mean by programs. I, and, and when I mean by it, I mean, I feel like governmental heavy lifts for education doesn't really work as far as bringing scores up. I feel like that is a almost individual house collective sort of uh, situation in order for that to happen on a national level. And, that, and it, it brings me to my next my next part. And I'm going to share something right quick. I'm gonna share this right quick and I'm gonna move on. Um, and right here, we've got test scores, okay? We've got, let's just look at reading right quick. Reading test scores, public school, fourth graders, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got basic, we got below basic. 40% of public schools below basic. Mm -hmm. All right, up at eighth grade, almost a third public school, below basic reading. You go to a Catholic private school, it's just over 10%. Mm. Let's slide over to the proficiency category. Proficiency in eighth grade, a quarter is proficient. Catholic private school, 43% efficiency. Advanced, almost 10% are at advanced level, Catholic. 3% public. Mm. All right. So here's my, this is my question. My big radical um, ideal, if you will. One of the qualms that some of us with more independent conservative beliefs with bootstrapping it, um, so to speak, don't like a lot of uh, government assistance, a lot of welfare, if you will. Yeah. All right. This is this is my this is my slight welfare slash educational reform idea. I propose that school attendance and performance be tied to welfare slash government assistance. My educator friends do not like that because mm -hmm. they're like, what about special needs? What about I'm like, yo, caveats can be made. Yeah. OK. And I'm not saying that they have to be on, on a roll. I'm just saying pass. Mm -hmm. and they're like, why are you saying this? OK, well. 
the reason that most of us don't mind humanely contributing to welfare and government assistance is because most of us feel like a child's future should not have to suffer because of either bad luck, misfortune or mismanagement or bad, you know, active, quote unquote, parents. So we're willing to make sure that they at least have a basic standard of life. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> but here's a caveat. Instead of that being something that's temporary, it's turned into something that's long term. And now they're say generational. Yes. Generation. And, it's like, and, and, and why is that? So my thing is the trade off should be. We as a society, we're willing to pay for these children that are in a, a unfortunate situation in order to truly improve their lives and in the trajectory. The only way to, in, to, to have a good percentage of, of stopping that trajectory is to make sure that they're educated because most of these people end up dropping out. Right. So this mom gets all of this assistance for producing all of these children that don't even graduate high school. And then they end up doing what? Then they end up doing what? So we paid for them all of these years, 15, 16 years to drop out of school and then do what? Fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, if we tied your kid showing up to school your kid actually going from one grade to the other one to you getting your check every month, then that would probably have that parent be more involved in making sure that that kid was doing, because we know how that stuff really typically goes in the all summer long. It's like, go outside. Yep. <laughs> Don't run in and out of this house. No, it ain't no programs going to no cultivating any kind of skill. This kid may, may have none of that. So anyway, that's my two cents, my proposal. What do you what, what do you think about that? Is that too is that radical? Is that too radical? I think in the standpoint of the United States, I think that's kind of radical. Um, <laughs> if you will, you know, that that's how to be viewed, you know. Yeah. And I don't want to compare it to um other countries, but I know mm -hmm. the US operates, there's a method to the madness, and there's a reason right. why um things are done and that's in the name of politics and capitalism because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have countries like and you we can label all, everything that we're talking about is socialism at the end of the day okay. these are socialist you know socialistic programs you know even though people are so against socialism right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we have in the united states are socialistic programs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i mean even yeah, yeah. Retirement, social security yeah it's like it's in the it's in the damn word yeah <laughs> subsidy exactly so um, you have countries like, I, I'm gonna just throw Germany out there. And I don't mm -hmm. know how familiar you are with Germany. Germany has something called Kindergeld, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a woman can, and I, I wouldn't say she can collect it indefinitely, mm -hmm. but you know, once she has a kid, they, and they, they, they do pretty well in a lot of things in Germany, you know, no issues, crime is relatively low, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of things. Um, and, I don't know if they were on that list you had earlier, but uh, you know, obviously Germans are some of the smartest engine. Well, mm -hmm. the smartest they were, engineers. they were, they were, they, they were above uh, the U.S. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> when it comes to engineering, I think mm -hmm. be between them and Japan, I think yeah. Germans really got it. You know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. engineering. So, um, I'm saying that to say it can be done. I think that you. If it was up to me, I would probably be called like a dictator. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to stuff, because I would be cutting all types of stuff. Because yeah. if you incentivize someone to have that generational mm -hmm. fair mindset, which mm -hmm. I encounter a lot of people, you have too, where mm -hmm. um they pass down the section eight to their uh to their daughters, you know, sometimes or they sublet a lot of these places to other people because they're just gonna stay on it for life. You know, and it's crazy how this, you know, the money is passed out. But I look at things. Section 8 in a trust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, they really pass it down like Section 8. I already know what's going to happen. Um, I could bring someone on right now, you know, uh, a friend of mine, and she could talk about how it's just like, uh, I think uh, where she's from up in Massachusetts is called cash assistance, mm. where you just get the cash, you know, you get the, the checks, you get all this stuff. You can just have multiple kids. 
you know that you're going to be good, that it doesn't incentivize you to get out and work, which mm-hmm. I think is crazy. You know that you can indefinitely do these things and the government will pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, tax dollars will pay for it. So I don't think that that's the basics as far as attendance. Mm-hmm. Um, you being an active parent, attendance, grades, all these other things. I don't think it's radical, but based from a U.S. perspective, um, especially from the left, the liberal side of it, you know, they're probably looking at it like, oh my goodness, that's just there. this guy's a yeah, he's you, a dick. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna work on it. I, I believe in it. Yeah, I believe in it. I think be in my business. Are you, are you trying to be in my business like that, worrying about what I got going on as a parent? I know, but see, I'm worrying about what you produce later because I don't, I don't need to be calling the police on that little mother. Okay. Yeah. Um.